but I knew that this was going to be good and I'm so glad that we picked up on it. Um, I used to take a, what, painting classes with, with Pamela and I can tell you I'm still painting but I've forgotten everything so maybe we can circle back around to it um, some, sometime in our lifetime. But here's a little bit more about Pamela. Um, Pamela Dodds is a painter and print maker who explores the complexities of human relationships engaging with and exploring the interconnectedness of humanity across time and space. Working from a feminist lesbian perspective, her work often focuses on women and women's agency. Pamela has lived in the Cleveland area periodically, and she currently lives in and works in Toronto. Her current exhibition titled, Something I Wanna Tell You, was slated to be on view at 78th Street Studios through May 15. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19, we are unable to see these works in person at the moment. In her talk today, she will discuss the works in the show. Also, she is going to talk about her works created in printmaking and artist hand printing process that she will explain in great, greater detail. Her work is exhibited regularly in the USA, Canada, and most recently in Europe, and has been purchased for collections including Cleveland Museum of Art, Capital One Bank, Boston Public Library, and Purdue University. She has been more awarded numerous fellowships and residencies such as at Open Studio Printmakers, Printmaking Center in Toronto, Fondation um, Valparaiso, I messed that up in Spain. <laughs> um, a great place I can't pronounce that I thought I had down in Quebec and Wurlitzer Foundation in New Mexico. Pam, you'll have to um, pronounce those titles for us later. <laughs> She has received grants from Massachusetts Cultural Council, Ontario Arts Council, the Gottlieb Foundation, New York, and Barbara Deming Memorial Fund grant for feminist art. As I mentioned earlier, the structure um, for the talk today will include two opportunities for questions, one in the middle, forgot to mention that, one in the middle of the talk and once at the end. Please send questions um, through the chat feature throughout the talk. Pamela Dodds, everyone. Welcome, Pam. Phyllis Seven Harris, thank you so much for that yeah. introduction. And it's so great to see you again. And um, it really is an honor to be introduced by such an accomplished and committed and compassionate person such as yourself. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for being here today. I'm really touched and I feel I'm on, among friends for sure. I'll just begin with a little introduction and then I'm going to share my PowerPoint uh, so you can look at the images while I'm talking. I also want to add something to my bio, which is uh, how my connection to Cleveland and Toronto and Boston, because I think people get confused about that. I was born uh, in Canada and I grew up in Toronto and my parents divorced when I was 12 years old and my mother fell in love with a man from Cleveland. And because I was young, she took me with her. We moved to Cleveland and I uh, later moved to Boston where I went to university and began my art career and came out as a lesbian. And Later on, I moved back to Cleveland, and then I moved back to Toronto. So that's my journey. The title that I've chosen for today's talk, Queer, Love and Belonging in a Fractured World, like my artwork, has many references. It is a reference to me as a lesbian making art and directly to some of my imagery which explores human relationships and in particular relationships between women. Our world today is fractured by polarized politics and fear, and there's a deficit of love and acceptance and hence belonging. On top of that, the pandemic, which recalls another health crisis which deeply affected the gay, lesbian, queer community and the world that is HIV AIDS. I think that now 
we have an opportunity to choose to perform love, acceptance, and openness, and to turn past challenges into strength and leadership in our daily lives and in the world. Speaking personally, I believe that this has been my own lifelong challenge. And now I would like to introduce you to my artwork and I'm going to turn on the slideshow. As Seven said, the occasion for this talk came about because of my exhibition of big paintings entitled Something I Want to Tell You at 78th Street Studios in Cleveland, Ohio, which we can't see right now. And this is ironic because uh, I feel strongly about seeing artwork in person. And these paintings are big. I'm going to show you some photos of the exhibition so you can see the scale of the work. And <clears throat> the figures, um, which are life-size or larger, this makes them feel close to us when viewing the paintings and the scenes seem to envelop us as if we are in the same space as the people in the picture. The people, scenes, and scenes in my paintings come from my imagination. They are not autobiographical snapshots of my life, but they are inspired by my personal experiences and observations of the world around me. An important aspect of how I approach my work is the notion that within the personal relationship, we find a microcosm of larger relationships in the world. There are also a series of linocut prints in the show. Today, I will talk to you about the paintings and then in the second half of the talk, I'll talk in detail about my prints. I'll begin with this painting entitled Neighbors. The woman sitting on the porch in the foreground glances over to look at her neighbor on her porch. We don't see the next moment. Do they wave and greet each other? Each figure is penned within the enclosure of their porch balusters. I was inspired by my observations of the way people can often live next to each other or interact in daily work life but live in separate worlds. We can feel apprehensive about crossing a social or cultural divide, unsure if we would be welcome or comfortable there. I imagine these two to be curious about each other. An empty chair in the foreground could be read as the possibility of their friendship, but it also emphasizes their estrangement. All of the paintings um, in the exhibition are, were completed between the mid 1990s and the mid 2000s when I was living in Boston and then in Cleveland. In this painting, Love Child, a young couple gazes in awe at their new baby while their respective parents hover awkwardly in the background. The unity of the young family is emphasized by the enveloping hospital curtain and the circular effect created by their arms and downturned faces. The parents, on the other hand, painted in contrasting colors in closed stance, appear isolated. I am intrigued by social situations like these where complex emotions are not acknowledged where the history of one person's experience comes up against that of another. In my paintings, I strive to create an image that pauses time and draws out a fleeting moment, permitting us to contemplate and reflect. In this painting, Cafeteria, I was thinking about the experience of the biracial youth 
negotiating which table of friends to join for lunch. Also, I intentionally portrayed the gender of this young person ambiguously, and I gave them a pink shirt, which stands out from the other colors in the room and uh, as a way to emphasize the feeling of difference and the adolescent challenge of fitting in. All of these paintings take a long time to make. I often would work on one or two over a year or more. Speaking of our fractured world, in recent years, many people have chosen and even promoted divisiveness, xenophobia, racism, and callous lack of compassion. Expressions of hatred are in plain sight now. But for many of us, the threat of violence is nothing new and frequent negotiation of other people's fear is a fact of life. This reality inspired this painting dusk. The viewer may identify with either one or the other of the figures in the painting. By placing the man in the extreme foreground, I invite you to consider his experience of this moment. This painting seems to be a favorite for many people and I don't know why. I myself can hardly look at it sometimes. I return to what I said earlier about my inspiration of perceiving the intimate relationship as being a reflection of the world at large. The painting is representative of that visceral violence which is so present in today's world, as well as the real violence that occurs in many households more often than we would like to acknowledge. The hot colors and chaos of different angles in the composition convey the hot emotion and distress, while outside the back door, the world goes on and the neighbors are uninvolved or oblivious. Many of my paintings portray moments inside the home. The intimacy of the home reveals that which is often disguised in public. Family secrets that are kept hidden, often through a sense of shame. I contemplated the fact that the nature of these secrets could be counted almost on one hand. For example, addiction, sex, sexuality, money, abuse. In other words, our families are all keeping secrets about basically the same things. So I made several paintings in which the canvas is a reflection or a mirror. I wondered about the way addiction recurs across generations as it sometimes does in this painting. And the bottle on the right, I imagined a scene from the future. This child, now an alcoholic father himself, with a child of his own, while a spectral child gazes down on this new generation of addiction. And just to point out the scale of the painting, that that is seven and a half feet tall, so that's a big bottle. In contrast, this painting, dressing, a much earlier painting, portrays a tender moment between two women and has a positive mood. It was through exhibiting this painting that I first really understood how painting a scene of a relationship could evoke different interpretations and responses. I noticed how, depending on the viewer's identity and background, the relationship between the women is interpreted differently. And here is Dance Club again, uh, which reflects a celebratory moment 
in the era of lesbian dance clubs and women's nights. And it's based on several clubs that I frequented at the time in Boston, and one in particular called Bobby's had two pink neon triangles suspended above the dance floor like that. There are more paintings in the exhibition that I hope you will take time to view on my website. And I am ready for questions. So you can put your questions in the chat book in the chat box um, to the right of you. Um, uh, but we'll just start off a conversation um, while we are waiting for some people to kind of come in uh, with some questions. Uh, so, you know, a lot of your work, Pamela, explores, like you said, xenophobia, racism, the complexities of uh, and intersections of uh, people's identities, what's happening in their homes. Um, what have you seen is the response uh, from some of the, your work and some of your paintings? Do you feel that people um, kind of are getting a, a worldly lens of some of these issues? Do you feel like they, they kind of more can identify with some of these things? What is kind of your experience or what are the, some of the things you, you've heard um, people are experiencing through your work? I love hearing uh, responses from, from viewers of how they perceive the work. What I, no, what I uh, notice and really appreciate is that the paintings seem to cause people to stop and, and contemplate which I think is what we want artwork to do in general. Absolutely. Um, and we see kind of, I think in, in the more recent years, um, I would say probably the last couple of years with the uh, recent election, so many people who are now kind of understanding more a little bit about the identities and having more conversations. You see a lot of conversations around diversity and inclusion. Uh, do you feel like the art world, um, this is something that's missing from the art world? Do you feel like uh, not enough of your work or a work like yours is represented? Um, is there representation of this type of work? Do you see more um, or has it always been there? What are your thoughts on that? The art world is a phenomenon that I have never completely understood. I feel it's important to make art that uh, reflects on our current times. And it's really hard for me to answer your question to talk about the art world in general, because there's so much amazing art being produced right now. And we're seeing uh, the opportunity and of many voices that we haven't heard before, of uh, people from different cultural background, people of color, people of different uh, sexual orientation. And I think it's really broadened what's available to people and the opportunity to see oneself in the artwork. And that is something that we just need more of. And so I think that, yes, the, the, the art world does reflect uh, our world. I think we have to look for that sometimes. And sometimes what is most visible may be not always the most um, accessible. Sure. We have two more questions here from uh, the audience. Uh, the first one is from Elaine. Where are you finding artistic inspiration and expression during these COVID-19 times? Oh, that's such a great question. I've been working on a new project that was inspired by the border barriers that have gone up in the past 
20 years uh, between different countries and trying to understand the fear um, that we are experiencing in the world right now and the rigid uh, uh, reactionary response uh, to people moving around the globe. The current pandemic has really added another facet to that question because uh, the putting up of walls is a way to isolate and uh, um, control movement and then we are suddenly isolated and must control our own movements. So I haven't put it together yet, but it's giving me a lot to think about for sure. And we have another one from Gwen. Hi Gwen from Equality Ohio. These are incredible, Pamela. I noticed that today young people don't have these public queer spaces in the same ways that they exist in your paintings, particularly dance club. These spaces have moved online and elsewhere. How do you think that will impact the ability to build community for LGBTQ folks now and in the future? Well, thank you for that question. I have to remind you that I'm an artist. I'm not a social scientist, so I have to only answer that from the perspective of an artist. I think that, as I said about my paintings at the beginning, I really think art needs to be seen in person. And uh, I like to see people in person too. If we, on the other hand, can have communities with people that are not in our local area, I think there's a possibility to ex expand and um, be connected. And that's our hope with social media, but on the other hand, uh, oftentimes our bubbles are small. Going out to look at art is a really great way to meet people. Thank you so much, Pamela. And so we'll get back into your segment. Sarah, we see your question here and we'll get to that during the latter half. Um, but we'll turn the floor back to you for the remainder of the presentation. Thank you so much. Again, you're joining us for Queer Love uh, with Pamela Dodds. Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, so now I will, as I said, uh, talk to you about my work in print. And there is one series of prints in the exhibition, but before I do so, I want to explain the printmaking process with some images of one of my students uh, at work here. Uh, relief printmaking is a technique of making an image by hand on paper. A design is carved into a surface, such as a piece of artist's linoleum uh, or a wood block, and a thick ink is rolled onto the surface and the image is printed by pressing it onto paper. Only the uncarved surface prints. Printing is often done on a manual press like this. You turn the, the wheel and the pressure of the drum prints the image. I began working in relief printmaking as a counterpoint to the big paintings. I found the black and white relief print medium refreshing. Uh, as I said, the paintings take a long time to create and the smaller scale, no color and more direct imagery. Um, I didn't have to portray an entire space. I could distill the image down to figures only and the language of the gesture of the human form. And the figures are suspended within an expressive atmosphere that can reflect the story. And whereas the paintings portray the entire narrative in one image, the prints are created in series that can be viewed or read as a sequence. 
I often think in terms of dance when I make these images. So I'm showing you a few from this series that's in the exhibition. The two women portrayed float in a private universe. Their connection is maintained whether they are engaged lovingly or not. They are completely engaged, though the figures never actually touch. I was thinking how a relationship, current or past, close or distant, remains like an invisible thread that connects us, even if our lives have moved on or if the person is no longer with us. An earlier series entitled Tether portrays the two female figures in a struggle or push and pull, symbolically representing uh, the emotional push and pull in a fraught relationship. The smooth surface of the linoleum allows me to make a graphic black and white image. I'll just show you a few from this series. My method to create these prints is to begin with a detailed line drawing. The other elements usually develop as I work. Often these images arrive to me in a stream of consciousness manner. I draw one image and the next one arrives. If you look closely at these figures, you will notice that they are not identical twins. They are very similar, but different. They are also not definitively male or female. They are hybrid humans, flora and fauna. Perhaps they are reflections of the same self. When we talk about engagement with others, we think of love and friendship, but we also engage through discord, grief, estrangement, and animosity. I created this work at the time of my return to Canada after living for many years in the US, as I mentioned. And these images flowed out of me and I worked intensely uh, to produce the prints, very focused. It was a time of sudden change in my life. Uh, just as I had made the decision to return to Canada, my stepfather died suddenly and the state of my mother's dimension, dementia and dimensions snapped into focus. I have always wondered where this imagery came from, but I think that the shift and fracturing of my own life and the consciousness of my own mortality focused my attention on the reliability of the cycles and rhythms of nature, her infinite creativity, and my place on this continuum. If I can ask you to remember back to the first dec decade of the 2000s, it was characterized by politics of fear and aggression in the form of the US war with Iraq. Little did we know that it could get worse <laughs> uh, and where we would be now. Uh, anyway, uh, my return to the city of my childhood around that time reminded me of an earlier war, the Vietnam War of my childhood, as I remembered the powerful anti-war protests of that era, I really felt uh, stunned at the lack of pushback to the Iraq War. 
I remember thinking, here we are again, after all these years later, has anything actually changed? And I felt a profound feeling of futility. So just to begin at the beginning of this series, uh, this is the first print in the series, and we see two women in a dreamlike landscape at harmony with nature and with each other. I consciously chose woman to represent all humanity, superseding the historical binary of an Adam and Eve that such a scene might evoke. The next image shows a threat of helicopters approaching across the trees. The two figures embrace, and it is their last everlasting embrace because they know they will not survive mortally, but they will be together eternally. And here again is the bomb attack. And I imagine these towering ghostly figures as the same woman spirits again, now as ancient crones or sages, witnessing one war after another. These are, as you can see, woodcuts. Um, the pattern of the natural wood grain animates the atmosphere and the skies. I used very fine grain plywood and I cut the boards so that the symmetrical wood grain in the panel um, reflected the symmetry of the imagery. Uh, in this particular one, the wood grain seems to represent the women's cries flowing up into the sky. This series continues with imagery of grief, mourning, and ultimately regeneration. You may see tears falling down and little plants sprouting up out of the ground. In this final print, Invincible Spring. I feel that uh, always the youth emerge new and hopeful, full of creativity and possibility. You might also notice that this series is a cycle that can flow back to the first print again. Remember the two women in the peaceful landscape and around and around it goes just like the endless cycle of war. And I think making this work uh, healed me from a lot of my despair about war and the changes in my own life. Uh, I had not done any painting for several years and had been working only in black and white. And so the last series I'll show you is an overview of um, this work in which I allowed scale and color back in. This is a suite of prints entitled Undertow, which describes a narrative of a woman struggling in the water and another woman's desire to save her. I created them by printing wood grain patterns in blues and greens onto Japanese paper, which is very lightweight but strong, uh, representing the water and sky. There are 18 prints in this installation. And this is a detail of the first one. Uh, I'll interrupt myself here because I want to show you how these were made. So here's a little aside on how I made these. Uh, so this is the plywood board that I've treated to bring out the wood grain in relief. And I am rolling the blue ink onto the board. And then here I'm printing it at the print co-op where I do my work in Toronto. And uh, 
I've used this press to print on a paper and I'm lifting the printed paper off of the board. And then after I do that, I'll print the figures which are carved in separate smaller boards. So the next few slides will show close-ups of these tall prints, which have uh, figures um, on the horizon in each one. The inspiration was my contemplation of the rescuer-rescuee relationship. I was interested in the dynamic between the desire of one person to rescue and the experience of needing rescue, or perhaps just being perceived to need rescue. At the same time I was making this work, it was a long process of two years or more. The migrant crisis was happening. And so my imagery in this work was definitely influenced by these global events. And a few of these prints are behind me on my wall. In conclusion, I hope through this talk you have gained an understanding of my work, how it looks, how it is inspired, and how it is made through my perspective as a feminist and a lesbian. I strive to create images that are relatable and understandable in which others can see themselves. There is no right or wrong interpretation of my work. And I always love to hear from you about which works resonate for you and what they mean to you from the perspective of your own life and history. And here I am, my name, my website, and my email address. Thank you so much, Pamela. Uh, this is amazing work. Um, we have some questions for you. Uh, quite a few, actually. Um, we'll start off with uh, Sarah, who had a question uh, before we got into the second half. Uh, but Sarah said, I see tension often in the slides between tenderness and alienation in such differing contexts. Even the kitchen scene has the companionability, uh, com sorry, uh, companionable coffees, as well as the violence. Um, I wonder whether the experience of seeing the work firsthand is more alienating. And I think you might have touched on this a bit with the digital question about needing to see the art up close. But um, do you think there's some difference in uh, seeing the work firsthand? Or do you think people can still be compelled if they see it through digital means as well? That's, thank you for that question. Uh, maybe you can answer it. <laughs> Uh, it sounds like, I'm not sure how the, word, the images are striking you. Uh, what I find is when people see it in person, there's kind of like, oh, wow, these are big. Uh, and for example, I'll see a, a little uh, kid run up and identify with a, a child in the, in the picture who's exactly their size. I... I, I, do th I do think that the scale affects how they're experienced. And I love that you noticed the coffee cups. I was thinking how um, morning coffee is a ritual that many of us participate in. And I thought maybe this argument also is a morning ritual for this couple. Wow. Uh, Pam said, I am so much more familiar with your print, so this is wonderful to see these paintings. I love the complex dynamics um, here excavated where the evocative space is created through barriers, that which is unspoken, and trauma um, is relevant and, is, and has impact. Uh, wondering about the balance here, always a consideration as we do uh, all deal with those troubling moments but also that of love and joy in our queer community. Uh, so just wondering a little bit about how you found the balance um, in some of these pieces 
um, that are complex. What is that process like for you, Pam? I really see these uh, moments that I portray as moments of choice. Conflict is inevitable and we, we have, I think, more choices than we realize in the moment of emo emotion, in the emotional moment. And um, I think, I'm not sure if you're saying you feel that there's an awful lot of trauma uh, portrayed and not too much uh, harmony. I feel that uh, the harmony is there, but it's a choice and maybe it's off stage. She also added, um, love the concept of rescue as it is so open-ended and fluid. Uh, we have some amazing comments. Thank you to everybody who uh, is sharing the wonderful uh, comments with Pamela in the, in the uh, comment section. We've got a lot of stunnings and wows and beautifuls and amazing. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for those, wor less those words to uh, Pamela. We're excited you're here. We have one from Louise. Do you wish to continue exploring print as installation um, as in this recent work? I am thinking in terms of installation with the current work that I'm making. Uh, I think it goes back to the effect that I mentioned of the, uh, of the scale of the paintings that I love the feeling that people are engaged um, physically with the work. So uh, yes, I am uh, continuing in that direction. And I've also been doing some more painting lately. So. We'll see where it all goes. Um, I, I know you already answered a question about people viewing the work uh, in person. And so uh, Beverly, uh, we kind of tackled that, but she just I just wanted to mention that she said she loves your work. Uh, she's a grad student of history and her chosen topic was to study minorities in North America, including race, sex, and sexuality. And so she believes that your work depicts all these things uh, very beautifully. Uh, another question that we have here is from Anil, uh, I like how art shared, how the art is shared in today's talk, um, specifically as it relates to the mundane situations. I imagine that that makes Pamela's work more relatable. I wanted to ask if and how nature has inspired her feminist aesthetics. Well, nature is always a source of solace for me and I think for many of us. And I, as I mentioned, as I was talking about that uh, series of the paired um, symmetrical figures, I think we need to remember, I mean, I need to remember that we are a part of nature. We're not, it's not like nature and then us. Uh, we are a part of nature and I find in that fact um, a source of inspiration and that we are reflected in nature and nature is reflected in us and that the openness and creativity of the natural world is a place where we can learn um, how, to, how to be in the world. Absolutely. Um, you know, Phyllis had a really great idea. We'd love to hear uh, maybe one word or two in this kind of interactive experience about what are some of the things you felt when you seen uh, Pamela's work uh, just on screen here digitally. You know, while those, those are coming in, um, the, Anil said, I very much echo uh, with that response. Thank you so much. Uh, Tungelo said it's very relatable and in person, the viewer cannot help but become introspective. The scale kind of demands that response. Um, at least that was my own reaction. Um, yeah, if you all wanna jump in and share some of your reactions, we'd love to get your feedback about 
what, what are some of the responses from the artwork? Did you feel uh, compelled? I know when I was looking at it, I, I, it was an overwhelming sense of, um, of identity. I, I know I could uh, relate to some of these uh, pieces. Um, specifically, I love Undertow so much. You know, you touched on what it meant to save someone. One of the things I thought about is sometimes when you're saving someone, you have no idea how deep that water goes. Mm, beautiful. And, uh, and how much work you might have to do <laughs> to save that person, right? Or to be saved, right? How deep, when we talk about trauma, you know, how deep does the hurt go? How deep does the trauma go? And I know that's one of the things that I uh, thought about when I was looking at um, your undertow pieces, which are amazing. Um, there's some other people, people are saying clap, clap, bravo. Uh, thank you so much, Pamela. Are there any uh, last words you wanna leave us with? Somebody said a uh, very detailed work and, and striking, uh, so very moving on screen. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Uh, Gordon, um, Leanne, impressed by the skill with so many different mediums, paintings, litho cuts, prints. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Pam, do you have any last words before I close us out today? Well, I'm so, uh, I'm so grateful to have all of you here with me, and I really feel um, uh, the uh, feeling of uh, community and it's been a really great opportunity for myself to reflect on my work. And I, of course, hope uh, for the future day when you can see this work in person. And if you want, uh, to, if you know a place where you think it could be displayed in your community or uh, I, I would love to make that happen. So we don't know where we're going right now, but at present we're together here, which has just been lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela. Again, you can follow Pamela online on Instagram at Pamela Dodds Studio, um, on Facebook at Pamela Dodds Visual Artist on Facebook, and you can visit her online at Pamela Dodds .net. You can also stay tuned for more information about programs just like these, information and resources around COVID-19 um, from the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland at LGBT Cleveland on all social media channels and at lgbtcleveland.org. Thank you again for joining us today uh, for Queer Love and Belonging uh, in this world. Uh, with Pamela Dodds, and we look forward to seeing you at our next talk. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lauren, for being such an extraordinary moderator. It's ah. just made everything flow so beautifully, and you've really got a talent there. Oh, thank you so much. I'm <laughs> just honored to be able to uh, represent the center and uh, work with people like you who are queer like us. We, we always say we're here, we're queer. And mm -hmm. representation is so important. So we're so grateful for you and the work that you brought to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Take care.